Hello, this is Daniel from Sound Headquarters. Check out this before and after. Test, test, test. Check, check, check. In today's episode, we are building two by six foot acoustic panels. We are starting with our two by two by eight square lumber. And I'm just marking out my two foot sections and all of my six foot sections. And to keep everything consistent, I'm using one two foot to be my template to cut all the two foot sections and one six foot to be my template to cut all of the six foots. Once everything is all cut, we can arrange and you can see I'm just sighting down the boards here and making sure that there's no weird twists or anything and no exposed knots or any sort of uh, imperfections in the wood that we don't want on the face side of our panel. So we're just going to pre-drill so that the wood doesn't split when we drive in these three inch construction screws. And I'm using the floor as a guide because that's giving me the perfect amount of space um, so that the screws aren't too close to the face side of the panel because we are going to be running these frames on the router to give it a nice 45 degree beveled edge. So there is our finished acoustic panel frames. And here is the router. You can see I have the 45 degree chamfer bit on there and I'll give you a close up to see the profile that this leaves on the frame right here. So you can see this is what gives us that nice 45 degree beveled edge on all of our sides of our panel frames here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get all of the sides of all of these frames all routered. And this is a very messy step, but this is one of those attention to detail steps that gives us that nice professional finished look. You can see the profile that that leaves right there. And we are just going to use the sander now to get rid of any sort of remaining lip or any sort of burrs or anything that would catch when we stretch our upholstery over the front face of this panel. So we want to make sure that everything is sanded, all of the cut marks are gone and removed, and that everything is smooth to the touch, that way nothing catches on our fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of these frames sanded, and then we are ready for the rear fabric. So we're just using a poly cotton blend for the rear side of these panels here. And navy was just what was available at my supplier right now. Normally we would use just a black fabric, but the navy works fine. Uh, since it is just on the back of the panel, it's not visible. So I do all four corners first. We're using quarter inch staples. I'm using a pneumatic stapler, but you could use a hand stapler as well. I did that for a long time as well. And just securing, not tensioning too hard, but just so that there are no wrinkles. And then we cut off the excess. So you can see I'm repeating that process for the two by six foot panels, all four corners first, just to get the right tension across the panel and the fabric lays flat. And then we can just secure every two to three inches or so I staple. So here's the front fabric that we are using. I'm starting off with the one small panel first, just as a demonstration, but we are cutting an extra few inches on both sides so that we have enough room with the fabric to wrap around. Now, if you do have any imperfections in your wood, like this knot right here, I just masking tape over them so that the fabric doesn't stretch into the knot and it won't be uh, visible to the front face of the panel. So I lay the fabric down face down. We add our Rockwool Comfort Board 80 insulation to the inside of our panel and just press fits right in. And this is ready for upholstery now. So I can bring that over to the table and lay it face down. And once again, all four corners first with just light tension. Then I get my first long side without any tension and then I can tension the opposite long side against that side. And here is a close up detail of how I do the corners. And basically you just want to use a four way stretch fabric and then make sure that everything is nice and taut. Um, so that way the fabric lays nice and flat on the front face of the panel. That's the face of the panel that is going to be visible. The rear of the panel doesn't need to look pretty, uh, but the front of it does. So you just follow these steps and make sure that when you are focusing on your corners, that you lay the fabric nice and flat on the front face. If it looks a little bit wacky on the back face, that's fine because we're going to trim off the excess fabric. Um, but that front face of the panel is what's most important visually. So going ahead and getting this two by six foot panel all upholstered and there it is all finished. So here's the room that we are starting with. This is the client's vocal room and we are treating a little bit of their control room area as well. Uh, but we'll be focusing on mainly on this vocal booth here. So the first thing we did was set up our laser level because to install these acoustic panels around the room, we want a nice consistent height around the full length of the room. And then we had this big bulkhead here that lowered the ceiling. Uh, so essentially, what we're doing is we're mounting the panel just so that it fits right above the baseboard. And then we have like an inch and a half from the ceiling. Um, so that way we have enough room to actually install the panel. You'll see how these mount on the hangers. So to install the hangers, they're just flush mount hangers. All we do is drill a hole into the drywall with our supplied 
drywall bit from the drywall anchors that you use. And then that flush mount hanger just simply screws in and it is ready to accept the opposite side of the flush mount hanger on the panel, which we're installing right now. So one side faces upward on the wall side and one side faces downward on the panel side and they very simply just lock into each other. And you can see I'm just twisting that panel to make sure that everything lays nice and flat on the wall and it's nice and level and there's our first panel installed. So now I am measuring out for the two by four foot panel and I'm measuring out where our base traps, our corner traps are gonna finish. And you can see that in one of my previous videos. So we just measure everything out and we use our level to make a nice straight T mark and we can line up our flush mount with that so that we can trace our holes for the drilling. And very simply, we just drill the holes, install the anchors, we just hammer in the drywall anchors, screw in our flush mount, and it's as easy as that. So now just moving on to the long wall here. And once again, making sure we measure out all of our gaps so that we have consistent gaps between where our base traps finish and the rest of the length of the wall so that we have nice equal spacing. And that laser really helps us to get a nice consistent um, look when we install all the panels. Everything is nice and lined up with each other and very visually consistent. And here's the opposite long wall. You can see we have tighter quarters uh, underneath this bulkhead here, a lot less room to work, but that's why we measured under the bulkhead first and then we matched the height of the panels to the rest of the room uh, based off of the clearance that we had under the bulkhead there. So there we go, leveling off those three panels. And here is all of the panels installed. This is before we installed the corner panels, which you can see on my previous video. And there we go. You can see it's hitting right above the baseboards and then just has enough room uh, to fit underneath that bulkhead. And this alone was a great help inside the room, uh, installing that last uh, six by one foot panel that we did there. And we can get rid of the laser since we're all done with the laser. And now we're moving on to the control room side. So we ended up doing one two by six foot panel going horizontally above their, their mix position on the front wall. And then we have two panels going along that side wall. And once again, using that laser, we're matching that gap from the distance from the bulkhead, uh, just like we did in the vocal booth. And we are just continuing that exact same method for the control room side here. And you can see the diffuser install and build in another previous video. We're just putting up the panels on both sides and uh, this client did end up wanting the diffuser to be centered to their window rather than to the rear wall. Um, but the way that we built it, if you look in the video, it does have adjustability and they did um, move the diffuser over uh, by a couple inches to the right so that it's, everything's all centered. Uh, but here's the final product. This build was a lot of fun. Uh, the clients were great guys, really happy to do this job for them. And they were really happy with the result and so was I. We did a lot of cool custom work here um, and yeah, I really hope that you guys learned something from watching. I really hope that you check out all my other videos. We are doing home and commercial studio building here at Sound Headquarters. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned. Peace out. This is Daniel.